Good day, viewers. Welcome to another CCJ Live. And with you today is John I. Johnson, Product Development Agronomist for the East Region. And we have Rowan Lewis. Welcome back again, Rowan. Thank uh, you. He's a Marketing Development Agronomist for the Northeast Region. Northeast Region. And uh, viewers, today, uh, what we're trying to do is to give you as much information regarding issues uh, concerning your crop production. So, in line with that team, we're going to focus on CCJ virus control program, right? Uh, a lot of persons have been asking, Ron, uh, what, what strategies we have to counter viruses, because we're seeing that this issue popping up in different crops, right? So, today, yeah. we're just going to focus on two strategies that we have, which we, which we call it our CPZ and our GAM. So, to make it simple, viewers, we have a CPZ and a GAM. So, let's go into the discussion. Uh, so today, you know, we'll be focusing on four areas. Um, what are viruses, yeah. common plant viruses, and then we're going to focus on the CPZ and the GAM strategies, along with the CPZ and the GAM strategies in the field. All right, that's good. So let, let us go into what are viruses. So basically, Ron, uh, viruses, even up to date, there's a discussion whether viruses are actually alive or dead, right? right. But these organisms play a very important role. I, I should not say organisms, you know. Basically, entities play a very important role in the, in the life cycle, from, from pre-dawn of history to right. now. But what to, so to give you a basic knowledge of what are viruses, these are extremely small particles, infectious particles, right? And the basic structure would have a head section, which is surrounded by a protein coat. And in that protein coat, you have what you have your, your nucleic acids, right? So your RNA, your DNA molecule, right? So what we need to understand is that viruses basically can't disperse themselves. So they can't move from plant to plant without what we call a vector, vector. or some means of transmission. So that is important. And that's why you'll see uh, some literature telling that viruses are obligate. And what that means is that they cannot uh, reproduce without a host. Understand? So those are some of the important points. And what their main function is to basically invade that cytoplasm and also and take over the, the, the main structure of the cell. So we're talking about the nucleic acid and the protein synthesis function. So what I usually break it down in a run to say is basically you're running a factory, right? You're operating as normal. Then someone jump in using your raw material to continue their own operation. So you are still in production, but your production has cut. cut. So there right. are several issues along that production line, right? So that's the role of virus, or that's the function of a virus when it invades the host. And some of the common symptoms you'll observe, as I see in plants, sometimes you see mottling, uh, you see streaks, you see a peel in other plant, several variations, right? As, as even some of the ornamental varieties that person's love, you know, where you have variegated patterns, so you get a beautiful pattern from the virus, but it's a viral infection. Right, and you know, as we spoke about um, vectors um, earlier on, we just want folks to know, when we speak about vectors, we're talking about, um, you know, other pests that will actually transmit um, viruses to your plants. We're talking about aphids, white fly trips. That's it, yes, that's it, very importantly. So we have to be aware of this. All right, so we're going to talk about how plant viruses are transmitted. So, you know, they are unable to penetrate the plant um, cuticles and cell wall. So, um, virion enter the cytoplasm of a cell um, passively through wounds caused by um, mechanical damage. You know, sometimes it might be in the field, you know, doing some form of work using, you know, we might break off a limb, a machine may cut a plant, you know, and then, you know, the virus can actually enter um, based on that. Very crucial point, very crucial for everyone because uh, a lot of times we take even the, the, the basic pruning exercise. So you're saying, right. by, mean, by mean pruning a plant and not treating that tool, the plant can basically be, be susceptible or potentially develop virus or virus can attack the plant. Right. All right. So, listen, as I see that, you, might, you basically have to be careful in even how you handle the plant, right? Because any damage damage the virus can enter those spaces. And other means of transmission, 
So we mentioned insect vectors. You have also your seeds, right? Sometimes virus, some viruses may, may basically be on the outer seed coat, right. right? So if you plant that, that seed in a particular area and that plant grows with the virus, then it further infect other plants, right? Also vegetative propagation. So persons who do the, do the basically grafting, so you have to know the source of your grafting material, right? Your cyan, all of that. And also through sap and other other pathogens or other or even nematodes. Nematodes. Persons persons are not even aware that nematodes True. can transmit viruses, you know. So you have to be mindful of those. And even well, we, we have here other vectors and let us um be mindful of other vectors. Those can be um actually workers in the field. Uh -huh. You know, most time we find folks that are smoking um tobacco, cigarette. Mm. And they're actually working within your paper field, within your tomato field, and trust me, that is a recipe for disaster as it relates to virus. All right, that good point, good point. And for persons who are doing paper, stay tuned because you're going to see a lot of information on this as we go on. All right? So that's how they're transmitted. Let us go into now the common plant viruses that there is. So one of the, one of the most common ones, and this is, this is basically the first one you know, that scientists identified you know, some years ago, you know, yeah, the tobacco mosaic virus. virus. So this virus has been studied for years now, and this has basically shed light on how viruses function, right? And so far, they, are, they have noted over 1,000 plant viruses that scientists have documented. But let me delve into the tobacco mosaic virus. As you see, how a lot of, a lot of how viruses are named, or how viruses are named is basically, what they look for is the first crop they, they identified that virus and the symptoms that come with it. So this virus was first found in tobacco, and it gave mosaic symptoms. So hence the name, tobacco, tobacco mosaic, mosaic virus. But as you can see, it, it basically will affect other crops, so other solanaceous crops. So we're talking about your pepper, both sweet and hot, your tomato, eggplant, any other solanaceous. And you have, you have some weeds that are within the solanaceous family you now. So those can be affected as well. Okay. And you're looking at, for, for this tobacco mosaic virus, as we mentioned, you have vectors such as the white fly, aphid, any sucking insects that will cause injury to the plant and cause that damage, that rupture to the cell, then the virus can enter into that cell. But other things that you mentioned before, contaminated tools, tools workers, worker hands. hands yes. So persons, so workers who smoke, farmers, growers, advise them to stay away from your field. Understand? So it's not a case that they will just uh, smoke a cigarette and then just throw it away and wipe their hands and come touch a plant. No, man. It's a potential transmission uh, factor, right? I mentioned before contaminated seeds and also basically an unhealthy plant or infected plant rubbing against a healthy plant. Right. So there are simple ways how this can be passed on. Right, and as we speak about, you know, we're actually stressing this word, vectors, vectors, vectors. You know, yeah. so it is important we have a proper pest and disease control program because right. once we have a limited amount of white fly aphids, you know, sting bugs, you're, you're sucking and piercing insects, you know, this will actually eliminate or reduces the possibility of we having a viral infection in the field. So proper pest and disease control and weed management. And I'm glad you touched on that point, everyone, because even, even weed, weed management, most of all. I've, I've, I've tell farmers that here, right? if you can effectively control those weeds, you can significantly reduce the amount of pests that will potentially right. attack a plant. Yeah. And as I said before, some of these weeds are also basically hosts. Hosts, viruses. right. But give me some of the common symptoms you'll generally see. All right, well, you know, some of the co common symptoms you'll yeah. see is, um, you know, mosaic um, neurocrosis, um, stunting of the plants, so the plants become stunt. Um, reduce yield and you know uneven ripe you know fruits so, and you know, one of the biggest thing we find is um, stunting 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 yes the yes. plants actually not moving I uh, mean I mean the, the leaves you know the leaves actually change color you see this type of yellow and the leaves kind of curling so you yeah. know and trust me it's devastating when you have um, these symptoms in your field and then your yield will be reduced um, significantly uh, and, that, and that's enough for any any farmer out there right so and and also also, farmers who are, are doing these crops, you know, so you want to even, if it's a case where tobacco was being, or, or was being cultivated on that year, you want to get out those tobacco plants. Right. All right, let us move on to annex plant virus. 
And this, and this one is very common, right? This is the tomato yellow leaf curl virus, right? Uh, for farmers who are going into to, uh, tomato production, you want to look out for this one. And there you see some of the host plants, you have your tomato, you have chili pepper, and beans, right? So even your, your string bean, farmers watch out for that. But how, how is this transmitted? And then again, we talk about um, vectors again. Yeah. And this is transmitted mainly by white flies. White flies. White yeah. flies. So you're telling me that I have to basically scout for my white flies from early on. From early on. How early? As far as me, as far as I concerned, from about a week or so after transplant. After the transplant. Yeah, all right, all right. And then, so as we said, we have a new product here on the market, um, Protect. Protect. So we just want to add that into the program here, all Protect. Right. So I mean, Protect is excellent for white flies. Controlling your white flies. All right. So common symptoms you'll see basically small leaves, intervenal yellowing, right, upward curling of the plant, as I mentioned, stunted growth. Right? So those are, those are some of the symptoms you look for. This will basically be clear, you know, especially for varieties that are susceptible. Right. To and, you know, especially in tomatoes, most times, you know, farmers will come and say, boy, the tomato, they are jer jerry curling. Jerry curling. You know, those, that one time year style, you know, that um, yeah, lead is yeah, a jerry yeah. curling here, it's a curl up. So that's, that's a common um, thing. Um, yeah, yeah, common terminology. Yeah, man, that's it. So, and then now for the symptoms you'll observe, right? So, a yellow mosaic pattern, right? Completely, oh, this is in beans, yeah. For beans, yeah. you see a mosaic pattern, right? Crumpled leaves, uh, stunted growth, that curling upwards, those young leaves showing that upward curling. So, this is what, these are some of the symptoms you need to look out for when you're talking about your tomato yellow leaf curl viruses. Taking a question? Okay. All right, let's continue. Ah, Rowan, I don't know about you, you know, but you see, if I'm, doing, if I'm cultivating crops, especially like seed pepper or tomato, this is the one I'll be, I, I would be afraid of. Tell me more about this, spotted wilt virus. All right, so the tomato spotted um, wilt virus. Yeah. Um, host plants, tomatoes, you mean if I say tomatoes, sweet peppers, you monocots, your diacots, we're talking about weed, crops, um, and ornamentals. Wait, let me stop it here. You know that, all right, with this virus, which is caused by trips, which we're going to get into, is basically a virus that they say have, a, have one of the widest host range. You know that? Okay. White. So you're talking about uh, your monocots, such as your grass family, and then as your dicots, your broadleaf plants. So right now, this, this, this virus has a wide host range, so you need to look out for this. So any weed that is within your field could be a host to this virus. Mm -hmm. right? All right, let's go on to how this virus is transmitted. Right, I mean, uh, one of the main vectors that transmit this virus is um, our Western flower trip. Yeah. Our onion trips are um, chili trips. So there again, trips is, um, you know, the main yeah. vector for this year. And trust me, this virus is very detrimental because, um, as you can see on the screen here, look at the fruits, look at, look at the impact that it has on the tomato and um, the sweet pepper. So these um, fruits will become, you know, non-marketable. Definitely, definitely. Because, all right, these pests, bros, our listeners, are small, are small uh, insects that will, that will basically burrow into the floor, or you can find them under leaf. And what they'll do is basically pierce that plant cell and suck this up or scrape along that, that fruit or leaf to basically cause streaks and other problems. But some of, the common, some of the common symptoms, you know, even bronzing. Or the upper leaf. Sometimes persons will think they have mite damage in, in pepper. But right. when you check it out, it's a severe infestation of trips. trips. You know, right? So you're seeing that necrotic spots on even the ripe fruit. And as I say, can't be marketed. Can't be marketed. If somebody say a tomato like that, would you buy it? Only when tomato is scarce. Yep. <laughs> the <laughs> okay. possibility exists. Run between me and you, it, even if it's scarce or not, I would even buy that because <laughs> that looks strange. Right? And then you're looking at your upward curling, your thick die back. So Viewers, this is a virus you want to you want to keep out of your field. Or if you do have it, as Ron mentioned, we have our protect, we have our capid to control the trips, right? But what we're gonna do, Ron, is to go in go into what we call our strategies, our virus control yeah. strategies. But what is important, you know, is the nutrition behind uh, uh, pushing a viral program, right? You, you control you control the vectors, but what after? Right? So let us 
go into that strategy? And let us just bear in mind, um, you know, viruses, you know, cannot be cured. Ah, ah. Viruses okay. cannot be cured, but I mean, once you have a proper nutritional program, that the plants will actually fight back in a okay. more aggressive way. All right, makes sense, makes sense. All right, so what the first strategy that we have, we call CPZ. You see, not simple and easy to remember, CPZ. So one of the, fir the first product would be your Cytoplex, and we use that at 10 ml per gallon, followed by Omex Fortify, which I use at 20 ml per gallon. And then now the last product in that mix is your ZMC Express, which you use at 10 ml per 3.8 per gallon of water, right? All right, so that is the first strategy. Followed by the second strategy, which would have? Our green stem, which we'll use at um, 10 ml, which is two teaspoons per gallon. Yep. Our agar leaf agassi, same 10 ml, and our Omex Magnesium Plus at um, 20 ml. 20 ml, that would be like um, four teaspoons per All gallon. Right. Lovely, lovely. So, so, viewers, what we're going to do next is to break down and give you an idea why this strategy or why these strategies work so effectively, right? Because as, as Ron said, you need that nutrition to fight right. the symptoms that you will get from the virus. And remember how the virus works, you know. It's basically taking over the brain of the cell. So it take, up, take over your factory. So if something takes over your factory and anything coming out, you know, will be affected. Affected, right? right. Either in lower numbers, or basically affected where you probably have a half of a product being produced. Understand? So let us go into the different products of this strategy. So one of the first one is called Miller Cytoplex. And I'll tell your farmers, if you don't have it as yet, ensure that they get your Cytoplex. Especially if you're going into the warmer seasons, ensure you get your Cytoplex. And what this product is, is a plant hormone supplement. And let me break that down. Basically, this product contains a range of, of ingredients. So you're talking about your sea plant extract, mm -hmm. your cytokinin as plant hormone, your gibberellic acid, and your auxin. And hear how this relates to the whole virus function now. Because your, your, your normal function of the cell has been basically affected, right? The hormone production will not be as great as with, nor with, with, with the normal functional plant. So what you're going to do is to add additional plant hormones to stimulate your root development, right. your shoot growth, your flower set, and, and that food. overall upward growth leading to your fruit set, food right? Set. So this is the reason for Cytoplex. So with the virus, in, with the virus countering that, right, where it's reducing that, that root development, reducing that shoot growth, this product will help to counter that effect. And if you want to see Cytoplex at work, you know, give a plan to application on this. I mean, I tell you, you'll see the growth. It's a miracle. Right? So what are some of the benefits you'll see from the Cytoplex? All right, so some of the target time, you know, the benefits yeah. um, include um, root development. Ah. So we'll have um, more root development. So more root development you have, the plants can uptake um, more nutrients. You uh, understand the fight, sense. right? So greater movement of nutrients sense. to fight the virus. Um, Lateral branching, so the more branches you have now, you'll have one more flowering, more food set. A more photosynthetic right. area to uh, be able to operate better. All right, all right. And then it leads to you now more greater flower and fruit development. Fruit. All right, so you see the importance of adding the cytoplex to that formulation, all right, which is good. So the next product we'll move on to would be your Fortify. And this product is considered as a health promoter and, and grows. Uh, if you know the Omex brand, you know it's standard and quality, right? This is, this is from Omex out of England, so they are using high quality raw material. And I just want to take a little quick second to mention that uh, for, for farmers are growers don't sometimes pay attention to the raw material or the source of these nutrients, right? As I tell them, you know, if you are building a building with some weak blocks, where you expect to am? Must crumble, crumble, right? So the source of your nutrients is very important because whatever nutrients you supply to the plant, the plant is built on that nutrient, you know, right? So once you supply high quality nutrients, you'll get a high, a healthy plant, right? High quality can withstand certain things. But let me go into some of the, or give me some of the benefits, Ron, of using the Fortify. All right, I mean, using Fortify, you know, you're getting on phosphate and phosphite. And yeah. one of the key benefits you must um, stress to that is um, increase fruit size and fruit number. 
ah. quick root development, and also resistant to fungal diseases. Resist the more phosphate you have in your program, yeah. the plant will become more resistant All right. to disease outbreak. You hear that, listeners? All right, so the, the, how this is working is that, you know, the omics formulation you know, is designed that the, the phosphorus component, the ph both the phosphate and, and, and phosphate, are moving within your, both your xylem and your fluid Fluid. vessels. For a lot of those phosphorus-based products, you, know, you just have only xylem movement. But this is moving through your water channel and your food, food channel. channel. So you're getting faster root development, right? And once you have bigger roots, you can uptake more nutrients, right? And then you know, don't, don't leave out, you know, the potassium, right? Which is aiding, pushing that pushing growth it. and also fruit, fruit development. development. So it's yeah. very important. And two, two last aspects, your manganese and your zinc. Those are very essential in basically fighting different diseases and building the health of the plant. So research has been shown that zinc is very effective in building the immunity of a plant. And you see manganese is an element that persons have to under it. But this is important in the water splitting process of photosynthesis. So without manganese, you won't have the water being split, so the photosynthesis process can occur. So Fortify is very crucial in this viral strategy. All right, next one. Let me break down the ZMC Express. Uh, so the ZMC Express is a you know, micronutrient um, supplement. Yeah. Um, you know, it can be used on vegetables, ornamental, fruit trees. You know, the main composition is zinc, magnesium, calcium, and boron. You know, yeah. these are some crucial elements to your plant development. Definitely. So you're giving, you're, you're supplying the plant with, with some crucial uh, micronutrients and as you mentioned you know express with, the, with basically what we call a tds right transcutic transcuticular delivery system i don't even want to have my tongue you know well transcuticular delivery, delivery system, system from miller right so once you spray on the zmc express you know within 15, 15 minutes, minutes you know, right the product is working into the plant you know so you're getting that technology so farmers don't leave out the zmc express you know it's a very powerful product and as Ron said, micronutrients within the pack. So you can do a foliar or a drench application. But with the strategy, you're combining all three and getting the different benefits in one mix. Yeah, man, and we, we just want to, you know, to knock this more into the heads of our farmers. You know, most of them, they focus on macronutrients. Yeah. Just the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium. But it is also important to focus big time on our micro. And, uh, and as I always say, no, Ryan, it's a small key to the big door. Right. right? Need it in small amounts, but unlock big yeah. potential. All right, so let us go into the next strategy, right? Which uh, the first product in this strategy is called a green stem. And this is a wonder product, you know, because many, many growers are supposed to know this, you know, from, from your marijuana growers, your fruit tree, vegetable, a range of persons have used this. This product is designed as a foliar nutritional supplement, a biostimulant, and a crop stress reliever. And based on the composition of you adding in seaweed extract, amino acids, carbohydrates, betaines. I'm telling you, this, this is basically a, a stress reliever. So if you want, if, if you want really stress, and, I, and as I always tell my farmers in a run, this is for plant stress, not human stress. Right. I know times are hard, <laughs> but this is for plant stress. This is the product. Because you're, really, you're relieving that stress that the virus will have on the plant because the function is reduced, right? So your protein synthesis is as reduced and other functions, the green seam will help to relieve the plant of that stress. Ease it, especially with the betaines, it's designed to ease the plant stress. Because when plants are under stress, you know, they'll naturally produce betaines. But what you're doing is giving it in larger amounts so you can ease the stress faster. And, and just to re reiterate, Janai, um, you know, once you know, the virus is there, um, as we said, virus has no cure. But yeah. once you know, the plant will be under severe stress, the plant may die faster. Ah. But once you have a product like a green stem, which actually fight and help depressing, yeah. the plant will actually survive a bit longer so you can extend your reaping from that plant. All right, all right. Here, Lisa, we're giving you the best of CCJ solution right at your fingertip. All right, let us move on to the next product, Agassi. And I, and I tell you, you know, when we first got this, you know, we were saying that, wow, wonderful formulation. So this was a mix that had to be in a virus control strategy. And you're talking about a uh, seaweed mix with amino acids, organic acids, sugars, all the works that is basically you're feeding like a nice organic tea to the plant. 
So this is help, helping to uh, relieve abiotic and biotic stresses, may I tell you. And as we speak about um, abiotic and biotic stress, let yeah. me just um, break that down a little bit um, for the, uh, for the viewers. Talk about abiotic and biotic. We are talking about um, stress that are caused, you know, from like environment, like drought, limited amount of water, ah, excess good. rainfall, yeah. and um, insect, ah. insect pests. That is it. That is it. Good point. Good point. You hear that, listeners? Stresses that you'll face in different seasons. So don't think of all the stress period as the hotter times. You have it in the rainy Winter, times, yeah. the windy times, uh, the, even the food production period. And being, vir being that virus is cause a stress, this is very efficient in giving you that uh, quick response. All right, let us move on to the final product in that GAM program is our Omex Magnesium Plus. And what I always consider it as a precursor to photosynthesis. So you're getting all those precursor elements that will help to bolster photosynthesis, which is what you need right now under a viral problem or a viral stress. So you're talking about your magnesium, your nitrogen, your manganese, your sulfur, sulfur. very essential element. And Omex design basically a very, very bioavailability product. That's why you have what they call it. EBA technology, enhanced bioactivity or bioavailability, right? So the magnesium plus will deliver these uh, sub macro and macronutrients in a very easy form, right? And give it a quick response. So magnesium is basically helping to uh, push the, uh, the, food, the chlorophyll level, right? And basically enhancing that photosynthetic activity of the plant. But even some of the other targets benefits you'll see. All right, so you know, this will carry calm um, and prevent, um, you know, magnesium deficiency. This will actually increase it because, you see, when you have magnesium deficiency, that will actually lead to even iron oh, deficiency. Yes, yes. And I mean, once the plant leaves are um, yellow and they're not um, green, you won't get that real photosynthetic um, reaction in the plants. And then, you know, the leaves, they are the factory. factory. They are the factory for the plants. And if you have yellow leaves, Trust me, you're going to be in problems. So the greener your leaves, sir, the more the hinge of the plant is rolling. Rolling. All right, that's it. And we have a question online. Go ahead. Okay, so Paulette on Facebook, she's asking, can this be used on my palm trees? All right, you're talking about the strategy, Paulette. Yes, it can. So this strategy is designed for your both, uh, well, your vegetable plants, your fruit trees, your ornamentals, any plant that you see that is suffering from a viral problem. Because as I mentioned before, you know, a lot of these ornamentals basically are affected by viruses. Yeah. Some have mild symptoms, and some of the symptoms may even look uh, attractive to the human eye. So viruses do affect ornamentals. And I think you should want your palms to be extremely green. Okay. So yes, Magnesium yes. Plus is a perfect tool to All help right. with that. So you can use a GAM strategy, Paul. All right. So what we do at, at CCJ is to basically show the different products or strategies or whatever we have in the field, right? And we're not all about talk, we're about doing and showing these strategies. So what is happening is there that the agronomist basically treated three rows on the Scotch Bonnie field, started, started when they were about three weeks after transplant, right? The three applications space them about five, seven, and seven years apart, right? So what you observe is that, you know, these plants that were treated, right, had a slightly darker green color, but the most important thing was the fruit set. The fruit set was about, I'd say, over 55% greater than the control. And if, even if you look at the plant standing here, you're seeing that greater body. Look at that treated plant on the left. You're seeing that greater body com compared to the control. And even in, in, the, in the picture or to the extreme right here, you see that stark difference, right? The greater vegetation. Bigger body, greater vegetation. This is what the strategy is doing. So this is a CPZ strategy. So what's happening here is that Cytoplex is helping to expand those, those, those leaves or initiate the expansion of the leaf set, right? Uh, shoot growth. And then now Fortify kicks in now, bolster your root development, right? With the ZMC coming in to correct some of those micronutrient deficiencies, which as you said, micronutrients are very important. Okay. So that leads now into a greater fruit set, 
and overall production of the plant. What do you think about this? Right, excellent. And um, just to back up again, in terms of when you have that great vegetation, I mean, the amount of leaves on the plant will determine your food set. Ah, that is it, that is it. Because, as I say, it's a, it's a factory of the plant. Right. The greater the factory, the greater the output. The greater the output. All right, that's it, that's it. You hear that, viewers? You're learning? All right. Join this. All right, so this was in Manchester. So these plants, as the agronomists came on the spot, I noticed that the plants were suffering from a two-meter yellow leaf curl virus, right? And this is in a screen house. So this variety was a bit susceptible. So what he observed was intervenal chlorosis, so yellowing of the plant, stunted growth, probably observing flower drop, right? The overall productive being, productivity being affected. And because this crop looked like it was early into the production stage, because you're talking about in, indoor, you know, so you want, you want a, a, a tall growth or extended growth period. So the farmer wasn't able to pull this out. So the agronomist went in and do the CPZ strategy and Let's look at the results. Ah, look at that, look at that. Look at the leaf coloration, you see in that run? Yeah. So this was after two applications of the CPZ, seven days apart, right? So those two applications, not even three applications, two applications, and look at the recovery of the plant. So you're seeing greener leaves. So this was, oh, this was 21 days after the first application. Okay, you see, greener new growth, right? You're seeing flower set, which will lead to now increased produ Product productivity, yeah. fruit set, right? What do you think about this? Yeah, trust me, that is excellent. I mean, when, when you even look at um, the size of the leaves there in comparison to the previous um, slide, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so you have seen that the CPZ strategy is easing that plant stress, right? Bolstering that root development, supplying the micronutrients, initiating flower set, initiating fruit set, you're getting the growth that you will, you're looking for from this strategy. And let me tell you, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not basically masking the strategy and a, and a product or a one solution for you. We're giving you real life scenarios that will help to boost the overall yield, right? So you couldn't, it couldn't be a case that we just only suggested side effects as a bi only a biostimulant. We had to back it with your macronutrients, macronutrients. and most importantly, your micronutrients to give you that growth. And these technologies from Omics and Miller will deliver that. And Agaford. So, before we continue, let me ask, what, what two questions, one question? So, All well, right. even, even before um, we move on to the questions quickly, yeah. you know, we just want to encourage our farmers, our tomato farmers, our pepper farmers, uh -huh. you know, to adapt the CCJ virus arm surgical. Trust me, many times we go to the field, especially with our greenhouse farmers, you know, they show a whole lot of viral problems. So we want them to adapt, adapt this strategy. And trust me, it will, don't watch the cost that it will cost you. Yeah. It will actually pay back Yo. for itself in the long run. Yeah, man. So you're saying that the cost benefit would work out into your favor. Right. So despite the, the little injection of additional funds, you're getting that output. Because right. for this tomato farmer, you, know, you would have to basically remove those plants. Right. So instead of removing those plants, starting over from fresh, losing that potential earnings, the farmer getting the response. So farmers, that's the next important thing, do your cost-benefit analysis, right? And understand. Well, let me ask a uh, question. All right, so for those who are following, you know, I'm going to make it easy. List three products from the CPZ strategy. And you see it? Clues already in the question. So list three products from the CPZ strategy that we have. All right? So anyone can type in a message via the different platforms, send the answer. <coughs> but most importantly, as usual, what we have coming up are several events. All right, you want to take, you want to take a piece? All right, so you know, on Monday, uh -huh. May 22nd, um, farmers training, CCJ, ginger production. Yeah. Um, where is this? Miss um, Porsman oh, Place. Um, place. Yeah, Malgrove, okay. um, St. Elizabeth. Okay, okay. At 10 a.m. And then now, and then on Labor Day, May 23rd, in, you have a Manchester Articultural Show, right? So all the articulturalists come out to that. It's Ward Avenue in Mandeville. So May 23rd, come out to the Manchester Articultural Show at Ward Avenue in Mandeville. All right, and Wednesday, May 24th, Farm Store Interaction. Ballinor Farm Store, Mile Gully, Manchester, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. All right, and then now on May 25th, 
There's a farmer training, it's a CCJ solution with Mr. Dean Parker, and he'll be focusing on general nutrition, right? So general nutrition for your range of crops, and this will be at Ebony Park, Agro Park, this is in Tollgate, Clarendon, and at 10 a.m., right? So farmers turn out for that, so Parker will share the information, and as, we, as he's gonna focus on general nutrition, so look out for the strategies at that training. So if you have any plants that are suffering from any nutrient problem or any test problem, you can even bring them out, you know, just properly properly package yeah, them, yeah, right? Yeah, as as we mentioned, like you know, we don't want to basically contaminate other person's farm. So right. properly package them, properly sanitize them. You want and preferably a nice zip like bag and you're good to go. That is it. All right. And coming up, coming up farmers, this is very important. So on Tuesday, May 30th, right? Meet the expert is a new new feature that we're having, and it will be in all regions, right? On your social media platform, we'll post all the information. So this is meet your expert, you so you can meet the agronomist live. So if you don't know Mr. Parker, look or Mr. Mr. Rowan, look how I look. You can meet us live, <laughs> right, at a farm store near you. So we we'll post those information on our various social media platform. And on June thirtieth, this is very important, right? Oh, sorry, June sorry. 20. I'm letting blur it. On June 20th, very important, or Agritech Forum. First Agritech Forum. So the first Agritech Forum on June 20th, and this will be in New Forest, right? Very, very, very productive here. So this will be in New Forest, and what we'll have, you know, we'll basically give you technology at your footstep, right? So come out, farmers, if you're near the New Forest area, or if like some farmers, you know, some farmers you travel the distance, you know, so if you can come out and come out to this Agritech Forum, if you have any question, any information you want to learn, you want to meet the team, you want to explore new technology within farming, new solutions, come out to this Agritech Forum, right? Come out to it. All right, so anybody answer the question as yet? Wait, 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 we're not getting the answers as yet. Come on, viewers. Well, on YouTube, somebody says Carbendazim, Acrobat, and Bellis. No, so no, oh, no, they are, no. They are, they are, they are, they are <laughs> no, a different platform. Let him platform know. Today. Let him know. <laughs> look, look like I come out of the seat, you know. Let him know. So after we talk about the CPZ strategy, they're not getting it. Farmers, brothers, remember, you know, the CP, we have two strategies the CPZ strategy, and it's based off. Omex and Miller Polar Fertilizer, and we have the GAM strategy, which is a Omex, Miller, and Agafert line of fertilizers. So come on, look like you don't want the product or price, whatever that may be, right? So you see? But in the meanwhile, just remember, come out to the Agritech Forum. You'll meet the team, you'll get in-depth in information, right. right? So if you're a farmer that is into new technology run, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. You'll meet us in a controlled space that we can share the information. Answer? But since we don't have a winner, we could just remind them what the CPZ is. All right, so the CPZ strategy includes your cytoplex, which you use at 10 ml per gallon. Well, somebody just said. Uh, oh, somebody, somebody don't just, just gave me. All right, heard us a while ago. Stevie, Stevie <laughs> just mentioned Fortify. ZMC Express and Cytoplex. And Cytoplex. All right, Stevie. <laughs> Stevie is a star. You know? Stevie, you can't. You know you let me down. Yes, Stevie, you're correct. So the CPZ strategy includes your Cytoplex at 10 ml per gallon, your Fortify at 20 ml per gallon, and your ZMC Express at 10 ml, or oh, sorry, 10 gram per gallon. All right, so congrats, Stevie. And uh, viewers, check us out on the next live. So I'm going to ask Stevie to send me a message on the WhatsApp. So, CV, send a message on the WhatsApp, right? So, on the WhatsApp number. Phone. All right? So, to collect your prize. So, viewers, thanks again for joining us. Another informative session. I thank Mr. Rowan Lewis, second appearance. You're going on strong, Rowan. Thank you, boss. And, uh, Thanks for, and continue to basically watch the different trainings on Carib Chem Jam, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all the social medias. Remember, we have our calendars, right? So if you haven't got one, collect one. And also, we have our information on our website, 
So caribcamejam.com. So check that out. All information, different events, knowledge. I'm telling you, check it out. Check it out. Thanks again.